Um, I, I'm actually like I, I look at you all the time during the opening dance numbers because like you're you're highlighted. <laughs> Listen, I cannot dance to save my life, right? Yeah. And there were four dance segments that we had to learn, yeah. and they put me in three of them opening yeah. each one, and I was like, <laughs> I can't dance, y'all. Yeah. But I'm not about to embarrass myself on national television, so I'm gonna learn this choreography and do the best. <laughs> And then they kept picking me for the next one and the next one, and I was here like, like how did they, that? how did they, how did they pick the girls like in the, in the, like the ones who the one in the front row or the ones going to be highlighted? Did they I have no idea, it but I think randomly? it does have a lot. I think it has a lot to do with, I guess, how quickly you pick up choreography, mm. how you're paying attention in rehearsals, um, how engaged you are. I mean, there's. Obviously, there's a reason for everything at this universe. We know that everything's yeah. very strategic. Yeah. Um, the exact and final answer, I don't know, but I know they are being—they observe you just as much as you're observing everybody yeah, else. Yeah, yeah. So that's gonna be my presumption. Yeah, and I'm so happy I'm, I'm seeing familiar faces at the opening number because, like, I saw you, I saw Cambodia, I saw Belize. I love, I saw, okay, I have to say that I yeah. love Cambodia. Oh okay? yeah. <laughs> was one of my favorites in all of the dance segments because she was a short you know yeah. petite little girl but let me tell you the energy the confidence she was so fierce and every time i saw her get up there doing her little thing i was like <laughs> yeah <laughs> I, loved, I loved her energy i love yeah. her i'm gonna share this to all the cambodian fans because like they are <laughs> so into pageantry and yeah i love, I'm, <laughs> I love was amazing I love Sarita too. I dressed her up. I think, yeah, she wore one of my clothes. Uh, she wore my clothes twice, I think, and it it really made me happy. So, okay, next question: Who was your best friend in the competition? I know you made a lot of friends. If there was a miscongeniality, I think you'd be one of the candidates to win that kind of award. But who was your actually, best? Someone had actually said that to me at the final competition. I think because I had my moment after prelims mm -hmm. and I was there just soaking everything in at that point. After yeah. finals, a lot of the girls are very emotional. Mm -hmm. And I was there with like a tissue box, like, you're gonna be okay. Hey. <laughs> I'm consoling all the delegates. And someone was like, do we have a Miss Congeniality this year? And I was like, I don't <laughs> think so. And then the chaperones were like, well, you would win. <laughs> but, uh, it was just really funny that you said that but i did make a lot of friends i did obviously i use that as a marketer i use that as a networking opportunity mm. um something's gonna come of something of this experience regardless yeah um so again alphabetically i made really good friends with australia bahamas belgium but great britain she was amazing cambodia she was amazing nepal uh netherlands i know i'm gonna forget some thailand Amanda was great. I'm gonna forget my roommate, Dominican Republic, Kimberly. And yeah. you know, everyone would ask so many questions to me about Kimberly and to Kimberly about me, just because <laughs> we were always in separate groups. So we only ever saw each other either breakfast when we left together or in our room that night. And then we'd be there like chatting each other's ears off and fall asleep. Yeah. <laughs> like, I got along so well and she plans to come back to Barbados. She's been here before and she wants to bring me to Dominican. So we're planning our own little trip. But you know, I got along with so many of the girls, honestly. It's hard to say that I have one best friend. I actually had a conversation with Alina from Argentina about mm -hmm. cyberbullying. And I don't yeah. think, again, just touching on it because it's such a relevant topic that everyone, especially the Miss Universe delegates have experienced. Yeah. yeah. Um, all of us have got hate messages. All of us got really hurtful comments, even myself. And it's like, it's so easy for people to judge you or to leave hateful comments or, you know, try and paint a different picture of you when they have no idea the things that you've gone through in life to right. get to that point you're in now and to be proud of that as well. Yeah. So it was just, it was really sad. And I even look back at some of those comments and the truth is the mean ones will always stick with you longer than the nice ones. That's right. just how I've gotten a million and one sweet and great messages that I, I hold so close to my heart because they made me remind myself that everything that I've done in life was for a, a purpose greater than myself and that I'm fulfilling everything that I'm supposed to be doing in life. Mm -hmm. But it's always those one or two mean comments that make you like, 
really like this is what we're going to start saying now yeah and it yeah. goes to show that the world is still lacking so much empathy yeah and we still have a long way to go yeah it's just so sad that a beautiful woman like you is getting those mean comments because like i wouldn't understand why um but yeah thank you for pointing that out hillary and um Yes, okay, next. Um, okay, where am I now? Okay. What was the atmosphere during the preliminary competition and who did you think that did so well? Honestly, I have I didn't get to really see anyone else's performance. Mm. I I still haven't gone back to watch the show. I want to okay. though. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't watched it again. Um, but just from the few snippets that I saw on social media cuz obviously I follow a lot of the girls and they were all posting um who did my roommate Kimberly um Dominican Republic she has amazing stage presence like that yeah. is her thing so yeah. she killed swim suit and evening gown i was so proud of her and it was actually really funny because when we went back up to the room i forget what country they called in prelims they called the wrong country and so she like she was turned around back in the audience and she would not turn until they called her <laughs> the country. country. Oh yeah, that was yeah. her. <laughs> and so we were there dying in the room and that when she turned she kind of like flicked herself and was like, "Ah, you got it now." <laughs> <laughs> and so we laughed so hard about that. So she was amazing. I yeah. really loved the performance. Um I'm trying to remember all of them. Um Australia, she did really well. Oh yeah. Um Thailand did really well. I'm just trying to remember. But those are the ones that come to my head first, but I do want to go back and watch prelims and finals. Yeah, again, you so. should and yeah. And uh if you could tell Kimberly, it was such a brave um decision for her to wear that white evening gown. It was so simple with the prints and everything. It was it, it was a breath of fresh air for her to wear. Like from a powerhouse country like Dominican Republic, like most of them would wear something that's glittery but she wore something that's very casual and i love that well, costa rica as well i oh, really yeah. like costa yeah rica. so how about you hillary how did you feel about your preliminary uh, preliminary performance like what were you what was going through your head like you were I'm, before they called you <laughs> so for opening i mean that was in judge but i still like i was just so excited and i yeah. saw some of my trainers in the audience michelle mcclean mm-hmm. miss universe 19 I saw her there like with her camera like ah! so it was so lovely to see her and I was proud of myself and swimsuit I had fun I I was me you know I yeah. I was smiling I would like you know try to be bubbly and just engage with the judges and all the cameras of course and you know I gave it my all mm-hmm. and same thing with evening gown you know I gave it everything that I could have I might not have been the best walker the strongest yeah. walker out of the group I'm not going to say I was because I know I wasn't but I gave it everything that I could have. I can't yeah. go back now and say I wish I did this or I wish I did that because there's nothing else within my power that I could have done differently. You right. know, I mean, I had great trainers. I trained long, I trained hard. I was me. I did all that I could have. And on stage, I was just proud and yeah. just happy to be there because there were so many times even when i was a delegate going through everything with about my story about gender based violence i never even thought i would make it to miss universe barbados right i never thought i'd make it to that competition then i was appointed then i became mm-hmm. miss universe barbados 2020 so all that was going through my head i was like i i was just so proud of me yeah and like i was just remembering how far that i've come and even in my evening gown i remember hearing zozy in the background You know, she was talking about she's a survivor of gender-based violence. She advocates for young women through a charity and foundation for Barbados to use their voices, keep taking up space Barbados. And that yeah. was when I was like, yes! Yes. <laughs> <laughs> And I just had a moment in my evening gown hearing her say that and hearing that in the background and I was like, you did that. Like, yeah. I'm so proud of you. Younger Hillary is like I was my future self at that point because I never would have envisioned that being me. Yeah. And so I was just proud. Like honestly, I I know I couldn't have done anything more. And I yeah, was just happy. Yeah, and remember I Yeah, that's good to know. And you remember that I saw your evening gown at the registrations and fittings and you told me, "Gian, don't post that." <laughs> so, so, yeah, yeah, everyone, yeah. Yeah. We go get our evening gowns 
and swimsuits, national costume, anything that would have been on stage had to get approved by wardrobe. Yeah. And so I'm in my evening gown and obviously they're doing behind the scenes pictures, whatever. And so he took some photos in my dress and it just so happened that I got added to the press, the press kit site mm -hmm. on which first. And before I know it, all the bloggers <laughs> are attacking me in, in this picture. And I'm like, what's going on? And I'm yeah. going through DMs and like, I'm not Miss Universe. I'm busy and like, I'm trying to respond to everyone as best as I can. Um, I can get like 40 DMs in, within an hour. And I was like, something ain't right. <laughs> and I'm going through them and I'm like, why is my evening gown being posted? And, I <laughs> the and I'm like, fix it. <laughs> and I'm there like responding to bloggers like, please take it down. Like it's my evening gown, it was an accident. And like, some didn't take it down. Some were kind of rude. I will remember that. Mm -hmm. And they're like, well, it's posted and we're not taking it down. Blah, blah, blah. I was like, they're like, take it up with Miss Universe. And I was like, really? Okay. I was like, whatever. <laughs> whatever. <laughs> and then I was just like, you know, once one blogger sees it, every blogger has seen it because you guys are quick on your feet. <laughs> I will say nothing slides by. And so at that point I was like, again, it's above me now. Everyone has seen it. And it's not about the gown at the end of the day. It's about me, yeah. about how I present myself in it. So I was just like, it is what it is. Yeah. And that was that. Yeah, and when I saw it, I was like, I actually didn't have any intention of posting that because I knew that was your evening gown. And yeah. I, I sent that to your national director or the one who handled the account because they were throwing uh, pictures, right? And um, Yeah, that's my national director you spoke to. Oh, and yeah. I want yeah, that's in his Brian. I want you to know, like, you're now part of the Miss Universe Barbados organization. Oh, like, wow. ever now. Oh, wow. <laughs> Thank loves you so you. much. Thank you, Hillary. Oh, my God. He loves you and all the content that you had made for us during Miss Universe. I was busy. He was busy. And you were so engaged and, like, so happy to do it. So he really, really appreciated that. Thank as you. Thank you. Thank you. Send my regards to Brian. And I can't wait to work with you guys in the future whatever would that be like for clothes or for pr i'm all for it hillary thank you so oh, much God. and if not for yep. you none of this would have happened so yeah thank you very much yeah so um okay so where are the questions now yeah okay here um yeah so i didn't really mean to post that really that's the reason why i showed it to you and I know. I, I, yeah, and I meant to say that um, when I saw that evening gun, I knew that you were in good hands. I knew that you were going to do great. And I'm happy that you made a choice because there is one delegate. I won't mention anyone's name. I saw her evening gun. I was so tempted to tell her, change your gown. Because uh, we were actually talking and um, maybe next time I'll talk to her or I'll talk to the national director. Um, but, but yeah, that's another story. So, okay, where am I now? Okay. So coming into the competition and during the entire duration of the pageant, who did you think was winning or who did you who did you expect to win? Um it's it's kind of hard to say because yeah. out of the handful that I had interacted with very closely and I actually got to speak to them constantly, hear about their story, how they articulated themselves. Yeah. I really 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 loved Australia. Okay. Maria, I think she was amazing and like you know if obviously if i couldn't have won i would have loved to see her win yeah. and i think everything that she represents from diversity equality representation inclusion she breaks so many barriers right. for women and i would have loved to see her have to have won or to go further into the competition because if she made it into the top five and had the opportunity to speak and yeah. answer those questions Nobody else could have won. Yeah. Nobody else yeah. could have won. Yeah. And she's so incredible. She's so genuine. She's so authentic. And I really, really loved her. Um, and I know she's still going to do amazing things for the world. For sure. Regardless now. Um, of course, having being able to win Miss Universe, you're going to be able to achieve a lot of your goals and dreams a lot faster. But I know she's so hardworking. She's so determined. And she'll be able to do that regardless. And, you know, even like I say that for myself as well and Miss Universe I'm sure we all had seen that press release that they did you know they're looking for someone who's genuine yeah. someone who's authentic 
someone who's a speaker, someone who's a role model, someone who doesn't try so hard, you know, someone who's genuine about their platform. They said all of those things. And when you put those in a box and say you put me beside that box, check, check, <laughs> check. <laughs> Check, 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 check. <laughs> so that's when I was just like, I couldn't have done anything more. I yeah. advocated about my platform for so long, even mm. before Miss Shippers. Um, you know, I was genuine. I I worked hard. I did everything that I could have. Yeah. And at the end of the day, they want who they want. Yeah. And there's nothing more that you can really do. And I think Australia would have fit all that criteria as well. Yeah. And so there were a lot of great women that I would have mm. loved to have the opportunity in the top 21 that didn't get, that just weren't there. Yeah. Um, I would love to see Cambodia there. I would yeah. have loved Japan there. Nova, Canada, um, Iceland, myself, you know, I feel like when they took, when they said that they're taking out the regions, a lot of people had hope, you know? Yeah levels the playing ground for everyone and i hope yeah. that they continue on that path going forward because it's, yeah. i don't think five from the americas five from europe all of that keep it even we're all great women we all deserve to be there let us yeah. all fight for it between us don't keep it to a region you know right um, i hope that's something that they keep going forward but yeah. a lot of the smaller countries like myself I was so hopeful. I was like, okay, wow, this really gives us a good opportunity. Yeah. And at the end of the day, I was also hoping that they would keep the opening statements. Yeah. You know, Miss Universe, you're a speaker. You're not a model. A model. Yeah. I've heard so many times, but when you think about it, how many times as Miss Universe are you going to be on a runway in a huge evening gown and swimsuit? Yeah. How many times did Zozi have to do anything like that? Yeah. And that was because of the pandemic. Yeah. But Zozi had to use her voice. Yeah. And Miss Universe is about speaking. It's not about dresses. It's not about swimsuits. While it's all fun, I mean, that's not the purpose of it. You know? Yeah. And so I, I was kind of disappointed that if that's what they were looking for, I think they were. But again, I don't know also what happens in their private interview. Yeah. But if that's what they were looking for, I think there were a lot of women I would have loved to see up there. Yeah. And I feel like this year was very traditional. Yeah. Like yeah, thank you. Yeah. And I think I was really hopeful that, you know, after everything that we've experienced during the last year, COVID-19, mm -hmm. racism, Black Lives Matter, the Asian hate, like yeah. so many like gender-based violence, domestic violence against women has skyrocketed yeah with everything that's happened this year this really i think separated the women who truly know how to speak and who are genuine about their platforms and the things that are closest to their heart and how they want to change the world and the people that were there for the fun the modeling aspect of it and yeah i just wish that it was a little different this year yeah yeah Again, out of my hands. <laughs> yeah, but I just would like to let you know, Hillary, that at least you raised the bar for Barbados. And the yeah, and the one that would come after you would be someone who's, you know, <laughs> of your caliber. Because <laughs> I haven't seen, yeah, because I haven't seen the last Miss Barbados that I really loved was in 2005. I forgot her name, but she also didn't make it. She competed in Bangkok, but she didn't make it. She was I think that might have been Jewel Garner. She was the last reigning I Miss Universe of Barbados. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, and I really loved her, uh, but she didn't make it. But here you are right now. You're such a redemption to to the island of Barbados. And now, yeah, yeah and now you're going to have a Filipino audience because of me. So, at least okay. and now I'm a part of the organization somehow. So, at least we're going to work something moving forward and... Yeah, Hilary, I just would like to honor your heart. You did such an amazing job. Very thank beautiful you. national costume, very beautiful evening gown. And thank you so much for being so authentic. And I'm just really happy that there's at least two of us here in the Philippines. Um, one of which is my friend, Sasha Zanskrip's official. We just keep- Oh, up. that's my yeah, friend. That's my friend, yeah. Fun. I must say, I've met some really great 
supportive people on my journey, people like yourself and, you know, and just like your friend. And I'm so overwhelmed sometimes with the amount of love and support that I got that I would have never expected anything like yeah. that. And people are now genuinely invested in me. They, yeah. regardless, this is done. Yeah. I'm still getting messages from bloggers like yourself who I'm gonna have <laughs> with for the rest of my life, you know? Yeah. And everything I do, you guys will play a part in and follow my journey and support that however you can. And I think that's really so, so special. And so I'm really grateful for a lot of the love and support and genuine friendships that I've made yeah. along. It's, I never, like, who can say they has they have friends out in Philippines right now? Like, yeah. <laughs> say that and that those people are going to support them and love them through everything that they go through in life yeah. i think that's so special yeah and at least like you know after the up close interview hillary you were such a breakthrough you're a breakthrough candidate because like you were on everyone's radar right after that and including like including my top picks i just didn't post anything but you were already in my top picks prior to the up close interviews and we were already chatting I was actually still very shy chatting to you at that point, but I, w I was not surprised that um, that you actually um, was in everyone's radar after that up close interview. So, like I said, the next Myth Barbados has a large shoe to fill. <laughs> and yeah, Hillary, why, why not train the next Miss Universe uh, Barbados when it comes to like you know communication, your character, your attitude, your perspective. I think that is the most important. Like, even if you don't win anything, perspective matters. Because, like, you have to prepare for victory and, of course, for defeat as well. And here you are. It didn't take you so long to, like, process everything. And you're all smiling. And, you know, you were able to accept that. Like, you know, it was just like, you know, another vacation, another Miss Universe. And, yeah, we move on. So, okay. Yeah, and, you know We'll see what's next to come for the organization and the, the future delegates of Barbados. But the thing is, even though we're such a small country and so I know Sash Factor does exist, mm. uh, we have an incredible team. And you know, yeah. if Sashes weren't involved, I think Barbados could get a, a lot of great recognition. Because yeah. I, I mean, people always compliment me on how I'm able to articulate myself and tell my story and communicate. But I have trainers to thank for that. You yeah. know, they helped craft me and develop me into the woman that I am today. And so we have an amazing team. And when it comes to potentially training um, any delegates going forward, of course, I'd be more than happy to help women grow to be the best versions of themselves. But even outside of, if it's not involved in the organization and pageantry, that's still something that I'm looking into just in general for women yeah. of our Okay, so yeah, this question just popped up in your in my head. Um, your clothes were amazing. Hi, Henrys. Thank yeah. you so much for providing Hillary the best, best outfits <laughs> ever. Henry, <laughs> no, I, I need to show them a little love right now because Henrys yeah. of Ohio has been with the team each delegate for the last five years. Mm -hmm. And you know, they go above and beyond mm -hmm. for us. And it's so, it's so amazing. And they, again, they genuinely invest in these delegates, not just because they're a sponsor, but they care. They yeah. want to see us shine. And they were, one of them was a judge at Miss Universe in 2018. They come to watch the show. They want to get to know the delegates yeah. by choice, not because they're sponsors. And they did my evening gown for me. Normally, we would have gotten a trip to go up, you know, meet the team, discuss, blah, blah, blah. Obviously, COVID, we did it all over, too. Yeah. And they showed me a picture of an evening gown that they, a sketch that they thought they would like, that I would like. And I was like, you know what? I'm never too fussy about things like that. And I was like, you know what? Do your thing. Whatever my national director likes and you guys like, I'm sure I'm going to love. Mm -hmm. So do your thing. And then when I finally got to the store and we had the unveiling of my dress, I was like, ah. it was <laughs> so stunning, completely custom made, everything, all the details of the beads, hand beaded. I was like, wow. Yeah. And then obviously when I got there, I had lost more weight from our initial measurements. <laughs> so like, we had to take everything in and like unbead, rebead, restitch everything. And they did it all in a day and a half and yeah. you know for that I'm so thankful and they provided all my wardrobe for me and even when I got there 
they're like i think i had maybe two days left and one of them was finals and they're like you know what we're gonna send you some more outfits and i was like okay like i'm not gonna say no sure and so i get back to my room and there's a huge box of like 30 outfits gowns dresses from henry suit. and i'm like it's two more days, you guys. Wow. <laughs> and I just have to call them and say thank you. But they're such an incredible sponsor. And they yeah. will, again, they will be with me on all my events, dressing me for years to come. Yeah. And you had, you know, every time you come out, like, I just really love your outfit. I think one of the outfits that I really love was the monochromatic suit. It was white mm -hmm. on top and the... That the, was actually the, made by a Bajan designer here. Oh, wow. And Yes, Lucine. She is so amazing. She actually did quite a few of my pieces. Mm -hmm. um, I think I, I got to wear two of her pieces. I had so much clothes from Miss Universe. Yeah. And when you think about it, it was like, it was only like 10 days. Days, yeah. And I'm like, I don't have enough time to change outfits. I'm already changing outfits three times a day. So it was really funny. But that was handmade by a Beijing designer here. She has also been with the organization since the beginning. And mm -hmm. she's so incredibly talented. She dresses all the queens. There's so many pieces that I want her to make for me now just because. Yeah. Um, so sweet. Yeah, at least you still have the whole year for you to reign before you come yeah. the next Miss Universe Barbados and you can still see, like, you know, show all of your outfits. So, okay, so. I got a lot of content to come. <laughs> what was that? Was that? I have a lot of content to come to. Yeah, yeah. And just please tag me and I would love to share them, okay? So. Yeah. All right, so next, um, we're almost there. So you were a favorite among many vloggers, which is really obvious, like, including me. Did this somehow give you hope that finally Barbados is going to have its breakthrough as Miss Universe? You know, I kind of, I'm kind of touching on it earlier. While I know like vloggers don't, they're not the judges, they don't make the final choices. It was very refreshing mm -hmm. for Barbados to finally get some recognition. Yeah. Very, very refreshing, I must say. But again, I think that goes to show with a lot of the work that was put in. And, you know, yeah. even during the pandemic, you know, I didn't have, I couldn't go out with a film crew, with a photography team to create all the content that this universe yeah. was requesting of us. And I will say it was a lot, yeah. you know, so I had to be innovative and dig into my marketing skills and do it on my own. And so for everything that I was submitting, anything that I was featured in, any moment that I had to speak with bloggers like yourself or the Miss Universe team, I could see that people are like, oh, wow, she's a good speaker. Yeah. And like, you know, she's, she's very articulate. She knows what she's talking about. It was really refreshing to get that recognition of hard work mm -hmm. being, you know, realized. And yeah. all the delegates in Barbados have worked really hard. Yeah. And I think I just, really dug deep into my own skills, being an extrovert, being a conversationalist, you know, my own story. My platform was very genuine. It was very authentic. It was very different. I was right. very different from a lot of the delegates of Barbados has previously sent. Yeah. And so I was very happy. And while I was like, well, if they see it, maybe the judges will see it as see well. It. And it was nice, but it is what it is. <laughs> it is. <laughs> it is you know yeah but at least you know i was just so happy because like i think the first time i posted your photo on my stories um remember that i sent you an email that a filipino trainer he's my friend carlo was very interested in training you even remotely and it gives it makes my heart so full because hillary like if you feel that way us vloggers like me i'm a very genuine vlogger i support who i believed in and most of these women, Hillary, are not uh, from um, Sash Factor countries. And for my followers to show interest on the girls that I believe in, you know, also gives me that kind of good feeling that, hey, I must be believing on someone who has a great potential. And that includes you. So I just want to let that out, Hillary, you know, just so you know. OK, so. All right. So here we are. Um, Take us back during the time the top 21 was going to be announced or was currently being announced. What was running in your head and how did you feel? Like, take us into the whole journey. <laughs> so, first of all, my feet hurt. Okay. <laughs> yeah. My feet really hurt. And I was just, I remember I was next to Bahamas in Belgium 
and I was nervous, not nervous, anxious. Yeah. And just waiting as everything got unveiled throughout the yeah. night. And so I remember, you know, looking around, seeing who still hasn't been called, seeing who's a hot pick, seeing yeah. who I've spoken with, who I know could potentially make it. I'm like, there are a lot of deserving girls that are still standing here. Meeting <laughs> And I remember I actually had saw my mom and one of my chaperones in the audience, like way up at the top. And they were like, ah. and I remember on a commercial break, I like got to wave up at them. So that was nice. That kind of, you know, centered me a little bit. Mm -hmm. But as time went on and I see fewer and fewer spots being available and a lot of great women still there, you know, at that point I was just kind of like, I was disappointed, but again, it's out of my control. and. Yeah. I couldn't, I couldn't do any more. I couldn't change anything. And, and I wouldn't want to change anything. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I was disappointed, but like I said, I kind of had my moment after the preliminary competition, kind of just soaking everything in. And after that, I just went upstairs, changed into my evening gown and waited for the rest of the night to unfold. Yeah. So, I mean, I wasn't that sad. I think as the show progressed, I was just like, oh, oh, this person got cut. Yeah. Wait, you're not there anymore. I was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, it was like a head scratch moment sometimes. Yeah. And that was it, you know? I wasn't yeah. really but at that point. I was there consoling some of the other delegates, talking to some of the other women, and yeah. watching the show backstage, what, what yeah. I could. Yeah. Because, like, yeah, I had the same feeling, like, um, well, going through halfway with top 21, I was like, uh-oh, uh -oh, okay, what's happening? And majority of the girls that made it into the top 21, Hillary, were on my alternate list. And I really fought for the girls like you. I didn't post it. I have my list here. I fought for those girls, really. I had a conversation with a lot of my friends, and I said, these girls are going to make it like you, Belize, Cambodia, Canada. Like, these are the girls that have amazing stories. And... Nepal, South Africa, and when they were not uh, called, I was like, I love Nepal as well. I forgot. I really love yeah. Nepal. And the reason why I felt really sad that when you know I, I went to sleep right after and I woke up, I was like, did that really happen? Is Miss Universe really finished? And you know, I cried um, Friday of that same week with our fellowship because like I felt bad for you guys because like. If you guys were not my friends, then I wouldn't be as affected. But since I know you, I've observed at least everyone, and I know your stories. That got me really sad. And it felt like I was watching a bad movie that I just wanted to finish. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm just being honest here. Um, oh, it's funny, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because, like, uh, you know, as things were unfolding, and what made it worse is that Miss Philippines did not advance to the top 10, and... We were like, okay, we were just, you know, Hillary, the energy here where we were watching after the top 21, we were like, okay, let we, can we just finish this? <laughs> can we just wait? Who would win? And I'm just happy that um, Julia Gama, uh, I spoke to her briefly at, in, on Instagram, made it to the top, um, top five. And I would have, you know, I really thought that, you know, she was that close to winning. And one of the girls also that I got surprised I didn't make it was Romania. Um, I really yeah. thought, Bianca, I really thought that, um, you know, someone like, you know, from her country would finally make it. Because like, uh, uh, just to give everyone a picture, here's what happened at Miss Universe. By the time that everyone came full circle, uh, figuring out the formula to winning, Miss Universe changed the format. You get what I mean? And a lot of the countries sent <laughs> sent really excellent delegates and they were left in the eyes. <laughs> you know what? I mean, if there's one thing, Miss Universe will always keep you on your toes. You think you get it and next year you're like, what? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you'll never get it. So a lot of the countries, there were a lot of I don't want to say this year there was a lot of strong speakers. Yeah. That's what we had this year. I want to say 2018 was the year for strong walkers. Yeah. Strong stage presence. Yeah. And this yeah. year it was all about how you articulate yourself. And there was a lot of great women who could do that. 
Yeah. And a lot of them I didn't see there. So, <laughs> <laughs> you know, but yeah. I mean, that, that's just me having interacted with the girls, getting to know them personally, going, getting to know them genuinely and spending that time with them. I mean, the bloggers, you guys get to see so much. We really yeah. get to know the girls. And there are, there. Are, I mean, 21 spots is not enough. Like, yeah, they're like top 40. <laughs> Like there's just, it's sad because there's so many strong women who I would have loved the world to have been able to hear more from them. Yeah. And you know, and it's I'm, sad. I'm, All of them are such deserving women to be at Miss Universe. We go through a lot to get there, to represent our countries and platforms. And I wish like everyone could get a, a longer moment to shine. Yeah. Honestly. 